children can be funny, can't they? I know my kids were. When they were little, they used to get really, really annoyed with me if I used to do chores around the house without them. If I mopped the floor, that's my job, mommy! They would just get really annoyed. They wanted to do it with me. When my husband and I were newly married, we want, didn't want to be apart at all. We did everything together. And well, now life's a bit more normal and we're often apart more than we're together. But even doing those mundane things like going shopping together can be really special times. Going on a long drive to, to get somewhere for a meeting or something. Those can be really special times. Just doing life together is important. Do you know that God is everywhere that we go? When was the last time that you invited God along with you when you went shopping? That's what we're talking about today. Okay, one of my heroes is this, this guy called Brother Lawrence. Um, he was a friar back in the 17th century, and he's written a very simple but profound book called The Practice of the Presence of God. In his normal life, in his religious community, um, you know, they, they met with God, they had their big group times that they met and they prayed and they worshiped and read the Bible together and that. They also had their own private prayer times, which like we talked about last week, had those, those appointments with God individually. But Brother Lawrence discovered something along the way. God was with him when he was peeling the potatoes. God was with him when he was elbow deep in doing the washing up. God enjoyed being with him when he was digging in the garden. And that changed his perspective. You see, he discovered the joy of practicing God's presence with him, being aware that God was with him in all those situations. When you drive or take the bus on the way to work or the way home, do you know that God is with you on the bus? Do you notice him? When you take your COVID prescribed one hour walk a day for exercise or your jog, whatever it is, are you aware that God's there with you as you do it? When you are elbow deep in washing the pots after dinner at night, scrubbing away the, the mashed potato, whatever, are you aware that God is there with you and are you chatting with him in the midst of that, in the midst of the soap bubbles? Jesus didn't save his teaching for set times. When he was walking along the, the road with his disciples, he was chatting and talking and using the things along the way to engage with them. He talked with them, he chatted with them. He met with people, he went to their homes, he ate meals with people, he spent time with people. And that's where he did some of his teaching. They did life together. And at that point, Jesus was confined in a human body. And the only way that they could spend time with him was being with him physically in the presence. But now Jesus isn't confined to that physical body anymore. God is everywhere we go. You know, I've been having kind of prayer meetings and things over Zoom or Skype or whatever, you know, video chat thing we've been using for different meetings over this, this lockdown time. And I've been amazed to see that as I've been praying in my house and other people have been praying in their house, the sense of the presence of God has been real for all of us, even though we haven't been in the same room, because God's there. He's everywhere with us. Are we remembering that He is everywhere with us, even if we can't see Him physically? We can hear Him speaking because He's promised that we would hear that. If we're washing up in the kitchen, and our best friend was in the kitchen with us. How would they feel if we just ignored them? If we took our mother or father out in the car to take them somewhere, how would they feel if we acted as if they weren't there? If our partner went for a walk with us in the park, how would they feel if we ignored them? Well, if God's presence is everywhere, God is here. Why would we want to ignore Him? Practicing His presence is part of what we should be doing. We're reminding ourselves that He is there and talking with Him. 
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it's a, a book that the Apostle Paul wrote to the early Christians in Thessalonica. He said this start in chapter 5, starting with verse um, 15. Let joy be your continual feast. Make your life a prayer. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. For this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. That's the Passion Translation, and I love that, that translation of that verse. Paul's emphasis here is that in everything we should do, we should be remembering that God is there, remembering His presence and act on it, talking to Him, enjoying His presence at the time. And then in, in again, another letter from Paul to the Colossians, in chapter 3, verse 7, it says this, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Paul's emphasis here is remembering to do everything we do for Him. When we clean the toilets, when our friends are coming over, we take a bit more care, don't we? Well, what about if God's there with us? When we do the shopping, we treat those around us more carefully if we suddenly realize our boss or our teacher is there watching us, how we treat people. Um, when we do these things, do you remember that God is there with us? When we make that telephone call to the call center to complain about that situation, do we remember that God is watching us and hearing our communication with that person who's made in His image? Do we remember that? Practicing the presence of God has great benefits, but it also has a cost. God has given us an inbuilt conscience that develops from a very young age. But then he also has the Holy Spirit, which, remember Pinocchio with Jiminy Cricket, who used to give him advice? The Holy Spirit does that with us. He's like that Jiminy Cricket on our shoulder. If we're listening and if we're ready, then he will help us through the day. Are you ready to practice the presence of God through your day? Why don't you invite God along with you as you do the dishes tonight? What's the worst that can happen? Bye.